YouTube! Welcome back to another iteration of Table 500. It's been a while since we've done this, and oh boy, do we have some gems for you today. I just want to quickly share something with you. A lot of you don't understand basic English and don't know how to read. When I post the ad for this and I say, send in one Table 500 replay, EDO Pro, compatible, current format, you guys will send me videos. You guys will send me non YGO Pro replay files. Shoutouts to the guy who sent me a PNG image. Just a, a, an image, a picture of the end board. No replay, no, just a picture of the end board. Someone sent me Despia versus Sortzel. Just a standard, like, desp like, activate branded fusion. Add Libitum, bring back Mirror Jade, uh, Masquerade, set branded in red pass. What, what, what am I gonna do with that? Like, that's not what Table 500 is about. People send me replays like this. This is called, You Say Would Be Proud. What would you say be proud of? Let's see, what the, Isolde, send for special Armageddon Knight. What would you say be proud of? What is, what is there to be, what would you say be proud of? Some of you guys really need to reevaluate and understand what exactly you're sending for table 500. But anyway, let's begin. Replay number one, we've got Buster Blader. Pa pl pants? Plants. With a Chowski the Mouse Fighter. And Wolf. Honestly, I didn't know this was a Yu-Gi-Oh card. <laughs> Wolf. <laughs> There's a card in Yu-Gi-Oh, it's just called Wolf. Oh my god. All right, anyway, uh, here's some plant combos. We're even summoning Scrap Worm, by the way, which uh, is an insect for some reason. All right, we're doing some Scrap Loops here. We're into Power Tool Dragon, adding DDR, banishing Spore, bringing back the Lone Fire. I think the goal behind this replay was really how many times can I activate Lone Fire Blossom? Uh, I'm pretty sure was what he was going for here. Ebon High Magician is special summoning Mystical Elf. Yes, you saw that correctly. All right, here's everyone's favorite interaction, Armageddon Knight. And into a cross sheep returning, special summoning, and boom! Here's another Lone Fire Blossom, giving the opponent a card with Dark Contract with Dawn Thousand. Rick a Glamour off the top. I don't know if he searched that or if he just sacked that, but that did look like he just sacked that. All right, Apollosa, Savage Dragon Pass. <laughs> That's it! That's the combo! That's the combo! He used his whole extra deck. For Apollos, but I'm pretty sure you could have just done this with like Hulk, and that's it. You didn't need to go through all of these nonsense plant plays. But anyway, we got Prologue here. Chain the fusion, summoning Buster Dragon and Buster Dragon Swordsman. Our opponent is going to Small World. <laughs> Set five. <laughs> Normal summon. Amano Iwato. <laughs> Doesn't go to the hand in the end phase because of the Buster Dragon negate. Into Cauldron of the Old Man. Pass. Ring of Destruction. Secret Blast. Nice plant deck. Dark Scorpions! Now, sometimes when people think of Dark Scorpions, they think of... Uh, nice hand trap, by the way. The Mourner uh, Ghost Mo Moonlit Chill is a trigger effect, and this is like a trigger, so the chain link works with the turn player, meaning that the Moonlit Chill didn't actually do anything. Anyway, Live Twin has the full setup here of the Trouble Sunny with the Prosperity into Ash Pass. All right. Uh, tries to use the effect of the Trouble Sunny, gets striked. Can't use the effect of the Kiss-A-Kill. Dark Scorpion Cliff attacks over. Ashing the next starter card of Live Twin. Normal summoning Dark Scorpion Mine the Thorn. Attacking directly. Adding another copy of Mine into Call By. Live Twin with the full setup and combo with the hand traps. Losing to... Yep, you're right. Dark Scorpion. Typically when we watch this deck in action, it's like some weird Jackpot 7 FTK. Not this time, baby. Straight up Dark Scorpions into Plan. B pass GG. Is it the best deck? I don't know about that. Despia. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, Farva, didn't you just complain about someone just sending Despia Sword Soul? Like, why are we watching Despia? Like, well, who wants to see Despia? Oh, you want to see this guy's deck. Activate Fright for a Patchwork. Allure of Darkness. Banishing Mercurier. Adds a card. Shrouded Dragon. Pitch and draw. More Allure of Darkness. Tragedy. Draw. Branded opening. Pitch. Alibur. Search. Chain. Chain. Add another patchwork. More pluses and cards here. Branded fusion into Albion. Triggering the uh, the plant girl in the grave into Mirror Jade. Dumping here. Allure of Darkness. Draw more cards. Springgan's kit. Special summon. Adds a card. 
into Medallion of the Ice Barrier. Don't worry, we'll see what that is in a second. Mirror Jade Banishes, Branded in White. Special Summon Masquerade. Polymerization, Summon Masquerade. Pop her up. Draw a bunch of cards here. Mirror Jade Returns, Special Summoning out. Judge of the Ice Barrier. Activating Winds over the Ice Barrier. Into Freezing Chains of the Ice Barrier. Dark Corridor. Set Branded in Red. And Draw Phase. Branded in Red into Masquerade. Do you see what he's doing? Ah, yes, Triple Masquerade, Judge of the Ice Barrier. While you control another Ice Barrier monster, each time your opponent activates a card or effect by buying life points, they lose 500 life points. So I think this is like 2,000 like, life points per card or something. Demise of the Land, into Mystic Mine, pass. What? No, he's not passing! Why would you- This is- You win! Just mine pass! Why are we resolving Hayate? Why'd you- Smartest striker player. Smartest, most intelligent striker player. The real funny thing here is, by the way, yes, the Judge of the Ice Barrier doesn't actually work with Masquerade. So the guy who sent in this replay doesn't realize that th Masquerade isn't like a cost. Your opponent has to pay a cost for this to do 500. But hey, Triple Masquerade, you know, you don't need a brain to do that. There it is. Very cool. Dimorbia. It's Morbin time. Set four, Dimorbia Theritia. Into set five, sign at mining, domain, chain ash, chain frenzy, chain circle, chain hope for escape, drawing, yep, you saw that correctly, that is an Exodia the Forbidden One in the hand. Gazelle is triggered into Dimorbia Brute Popping, it's like an Icarus attack for Dimorbias. Floating into Diplos, normal summon Flame Buffalo, drawing, drawing more cards, and Spinny, special summon itself into Wolf, triggering the Parallel Exceed, but nothing else because he banished it with Desires, he banished the other two, you idiot! <laughs> ah! Dimorbia Theresia, setting another card here into Utopia, paying down to 10 life points into a Salomon Great Roar, set to pay 5 life points with Rexton. Dimorbia out here making uh, life points look like the average Yu-Gi-Oh player's bank account. Oh my god. Alright, Trap Trick into End of the Line. You guys know what this card is? If your life is lower than 100, draw 2. And if your life point is lower than 10, draw 2. <laughs> end of the line, draw 4. Draw 4. Uh, Activist Effect of Rexter pays 2. Two life points. <laughs> Tax over the Rexter into Dimorbia uh, Theritia, uh, triggering the wolf here. Uh, going through the salad plays, keeping up the Baboska. Here's Dimorbia Domain, costing two whole life points. Into another Trap of Darkness, which does what? Trap of Darkness, I believe, uh, copies a card in the graveyard. Double hope for escape here. Draw two. Draw two. Will we finally see these Exodia pieces? Hope for escape is free here because the effect of the stealth Bergia allows you to use Dimorbius uh, card effects uh, for uh, for free. And that solemn judgment costed one, by the way. That was a one life point judgment, uh, which rounds up, I believe. So half your life points and then judgment again basically means you can infinitely judgment. Uh, and on top of that, you have the, uh, the, free, uh, the free what's it called? Um, so yes, life points round up, but yes, victory here through Exodia with two life points versus 4,505. Very cool. Earth Machines! I don't know why or what the attraction or appeal of this deck is. For some reason, this was the most sent in replay. Yes, no, you, you heard that correctly. This was the most sent in replay. In, tip in Table 500, there generally is people sending in archetypes. Uh, that just seemed to be very popular at the time. I can't remember what the last one was, uh, but I think it was like um, randomly like Orcust or something last time. Uh, I think four of you sent in Earth Machine replays. Uh, so anyway, let's see what the average Earth Machine deck can do. A whole bunch of stuff here. Uh, tributing and special summoning, tributing and special summoning, and then using the guys in the graveyard who don't really seem to do anything. Sort of the typical standard play. <laughs> Activating the effect of one of these Earth Machines that makes all of your Earth Machines level 13. Overlaying into Numerus and Numeronia. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, why is this relevant? Oh boy, drawing off the desires here into the Despot 3. Pot of Avarice. Oh my god, is there more? Scale. Pendulum. Pendulum! Special summoning here into a Notoria Beast and a Regulus. Look at this combo. All right, why is this relevant? So, Numerus Numeronia says, when opponent monster 
Um, sorry. Uh, uh, when opponent monster declares an attack, detach material from this, negate that attack, and if you do, you gain life equal to that opponent's monster's attack. Uh, but also during your opponent's next turn, after this card was special summoned, monsters your opponent controls must attack this card. I think, right? Or maybe it wasn't correctly summoned. Anyway, we'll see what happens here. Uh, field spell is flipped over. That gets negated. Then uses the imperm after. So it's like, maybe we should have checked what the nat beast does before we use our spells. Here's a bunch of fairies coming down here with the the dark lord plays here into angel 07 for Xchel, uh, adding a card into nurse reficule. This is relevant. Nurse Reficule says, Any effect that would make your opponent gain life inflicts the same amount of damage to them instead. What did Numeronia say? Hmm. Declare an attack. Activate Numeronia. Gain 6,000 life. Take 6,000 life. <laughs> Who would have thought that the perfect counter to Numeronia's Numeronia would be Nurse Reficule of all cards? And the next replay is Infernity. Now, it feels really bad when your opponent draws e Telly, but if there's one deck in the game that can take advantage of uh, Punk Engine, Mill 5, then Mill 4 with Zombie Vampire, it's probably Infernity. Let's see what combos we've got here. Halka Fibrax summoning uh, off of the uh, Emergency fa Sage is how we started this combo, using the Trans Modify. Never seen Infernity Sage in my life, but here's a bunch of Infernity plays here. Basically, the name of the game with Infernity is How many times can I resolve Archfiend? Back in the good old days when Yu-Gi-Oh cards didn't say once per turn, um, you were able to uh, activate Infernity Archfiend and search Infernity cards and keep looping them forever and five ever. Adding Infernity Paranoia here. I don't even know what that is. Sage special summons itself from the graveyard. Paranoia tributes to summon Infernity Wildcat from the deck. Banishing the Mirage for cost, which means we can uh, summon Levier to then bring back the Mirage, and then use the Mirage again. Here's hand loop number one incoming here. Trishula, remember, recently, actually relevantly, on the ban list, made this combo possible. Because Trishula got put from one to three. Why? Why? No one knows. No one knows. Hundred Eyes Dragon copies Infernity Mirage. This is the third time we're resolving Mirage for this game here. Into Trishula number two. <laughs> and to enter Blathnir, a rank 9, which lets you, yes, that you saw that correctly, loop another card. Levier, bring back the Mirage, bring back two Necromancers into Archfiend. Archfiend searches Barrier, N Necromancer brings back into the third and final Trishula, Link Succession, bringing back the Necromancer, bringing back the Sage into a Psyframe Omega. So you have the full setup here. If your opponent uh, even top decks any playable card, you have Apollosa, you have Infernity Barrier, uh, which is weirdly dead because we don't have an Infernity Monster in face up attack position. Never mind. Uh, but we've also got Omega to add to banish the last add in the hand here from the uh, the search of the punk monsters. Now I don't think Infernity is a good deck, but at the same time, really was no reason to bring in, uh, Trish back to three, was there? I don't know. If we ever see this guy at a YCS, you'll know what happened. Master Duel. This is a good one. This replay is called Master Duel. For those of you who've played Master Duel to any extent, you might have known or might be familiar with what it's like to play Master Duel. We have Master Duel in the top left here versus Synchro Fest with a hand of Draco cards. It's a Synchro Fest. Warbler into Cobalt, getting your search here, doing some Lyrilus combos. We've got Swallow into Nerval, overlaying into a second recital. <laughs> That's illegal! Yes, it is, but this is Master Duel. Um, Nervile searching here into the Utopic Dragon. We all know this combo. It's so fun where our opponent does this against us, isn't it? Wagtail for the bird call. And adds a Canary into Simorg. And, uh, resolves the Canary here, bringing back, overlaying into this base Basuk combo here. Alright. Pot of Desires, draw two cards. Shall we see what we banished? Hmm. <laughs> the FTK. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, past turn here. What do we got here? We got the full board into Dark Ruler, Raigeki. <laughs> Our opponent is then going to, uh, okay, we're just going to use Revolt. Very cool. Okay, hi. Don't don't worry about it. Here is Dynamite, going to Chain Maxi to give our opponent a face-up return. Why? Uh, don't ask. Don't ask. Card Demise, draw three, Pot of Desires, banish ten. What did we banish? <laughs> Red copies of Mystic Wine. <laughs> Top deck into Dark Hole for Numeron Network, everyone's favorite Master Duel deck, right guys? Right? We all love Numeron players, huh? 
Here's Nimmerons uh, summoning out into four cards here, drawn off the top, mirror forcing the Nimmerons into Cross Eldland. Sending the last back row here, and finally, our opponent gets to play now. Melody of Awakening Dragon, alternative pass. A typical play you will see in silver. But now we've got Alpha Zeta, yes. And now for the other Master Duel experience, Drytron. <laughs> Drytron. <laughs> So we're gonna just sit here and do our regular old uh, Drytron combos. Oh my god, it's so fun when you're playing best of one and you don't draw any hand traps against this deck and they do the full thing and you're sitting there wondering why you're even logged in. <laughs> Nobody knows. All right, replenishing a full hand here, ending on the Herald of the Ultimateness. I'm pretty sure we could have killed our opponent here, but ladies and gentlemen, this is a performance. <laughs> draw skill drain. <laughs> the master duel experience. All right, here we go. Uh, I don't know why there's a Cephalon here. I don't think we ever see this card in Master Duel. Uh, negating the skill drain, special summoning, battle phase, attacking, and uh, there it is. The Master Duel experience. Uh, it's a nice little quick one here. It's called Moki Moki Control. Our opponent's going to Ash our Pot of Extravagance. We're going to Painful Decision for Moki Moki and pass. Our opponent summons Alibur. We've got skill drain. Greater polymerization. Uh, Striking the Alibur Search, taking the direct attack from the Dark Lord, Pot of Extravagance, Normal Moki, Moon Mirror Shield, Punch, and Set 2. <laughs> Best deck. Alright, next up we've got Orcusts. Now the Plant Engine, uh, I don't know about the Plant Engine, the Punk Engine is actually really, really good in Orcust. So, if you ever wanted to try and play some modern TCG Orcust, well, I do declare that maybe perhaps the... Uh, Punk engine is pretty good for you. You kind of need your normal summon in Orcus, so I don't know about the Aramesia engine here. But this is uh, as good as it gets for Orcus, at least since the 2019 anyway. So this Punk engine helps you go into the Magic Dragon, who mills five cards here. Gets a card to the hand, hits the uh, Gear Suit, that we get to mill four more. Bringing back a Tuner, special summoning into Halka Fibrax for the bar on the floor. And now we get a Hot Red Dragon. Special summoning out of the hand here, the gear suit. Remember, we can't use normal summon effects because of the right engine. But if we mill exactly bombard and draw gear suit, well, I guess it doesn't matter here. And uh, that's basically it. The most powerful Orcus board uh, post ban list. Uh, it's really just the same you would always do. But you get three more extra negates if you play the punk engine. I don't know. Is it viable? Maybe. Maybe not. Um, I guess it's uh, a pretty fan favorite deck and people do like Orcus, so... Hey, if, the, if you ever wanted to try and uh, build this deck today, maybe the Punk Engine is something to look for. Uh, pretty freaking good board. I don't know how many decks are going to be able to deal with this. But yeah, there's Orcust. Next up, we've got Pendulum. All of... In the top left corner, we have Steven J. Sakaki versus Troll Despair. A Nerd Factor special here, I believe, chat. Extra Pendulum! Duelist Alliance, pen call pitch. This new card, up uh, uh, late performer pal puts herself in the scale here. We're gonna pendulum summon four monsters, popping with the wizard and resolving the uh, the magician here. And uh, getting another scale here into Dissolver, popping to draw one card. Banishing with desires, drawing more performer pals, banishing. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> Synchro into Odd Eyes Video Burst for Rebellion Dragon, Normal Joker, Synchro into Cluster Creor Wing, Odd Eyes Synchron, Synchro into Odd Eyes Wing Dragon, Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, Dissolver, Fusing Away into Odd Eyes Venom Dragon, Linking it to Deco Talker. <laughs> it, bro, it's two negates! <laughs> it, it's working! <laughs> Pass. Uh, and there it is. The, your average pen deck. Uh, Stephen J. Trifonovsky, if you're watching, uh, I hope you're proud because this is uh, this is as good as, uh, good as as this deck's ever gonna be. Wow, there's a lot of shitty performer files in here, isn't there? The uh, hell, Gongato. <laughs> Why did you discard Cosmic Cycle? <laughs> Why did you discard Must Cosmic? Cycle? There's <laughs> opponent's hand here. Uh, so this is the modern 2022 national format uh, meta chat. Is yep. 
Welcome back, mine. Glad it's in the meta again. This is an actual table 500 duel. Just to give you a little bit of a break from all of like the scripted solitaire combo, some of you wanted to watch actual gameplay. What is an actual table 500 duel? Well, it's penguins and mutants, apparently. <laughs> so we're gonna do the full penguin combo turn one, transmodifying our no penguin into barrier statue of the torrent. You would think that that's just GG FTK game. But wait, we're playing mutants. <laughs> Which, today I learned, mutants are waters. <laughs> I didn't, it didn't even occur to me, I guess. Special summoning a bunch of guy mutant fusion into mutant sins. It's a water. It's water. I didn't know that. Did you know that? Apparently not. Okay. All right. Well, mutants are able to out the formidable, insane, broken, turn one board of barrier statue brave pass. Penguin Soldier putting in the actual work here, bouncing away monsters, uh, tributing the, sorry, triggering the Squire in the hand by setting a monster using the flip effect of the Penguin uh, to then destroy the field spell, sinking again into a Penguin Brave, bringing out Nightmare Penguin. Uh, Anemone brings back a Link to Water, which lets us go into Bubble Reef, and our opponent's Beast adds back Mutant Cry about it. Uh, mute, uh, extravagance is drawn here into terraforming for the secret lab. Die Fi activated for the evolution lab. M64, uh, Nintendo Commodore activates the effect here to search for a mutant clash. And, uh, attributing for mutant arsenal, I think, or mist? I think this one's immune to traps or something. Uh, Bubble Reef being negated here. Uh, Monster Reborn into a Chain Mutant Cry about it, summoning the ultimate mutant monster. I don't actually know what it does. I think it has targeting protection or something. Not exactly a very uh, amazing boss monster, but I think it has a negate at least. It's just really hard to draw and uh, set up in this deck. I don't know why you keep using Reef. Like, it, the more you activate this, it doesn't just make it like magically start working again. Okay, here we go. It's live. Necroface is dropped from mutants, uh, shuffling back a billion cards here, climbing up to 31. Get Ice Barriered, idiot! Uh, which makes your opponent's monster become zero attack, basically. And then it has a bunch of other card effects I don't really know <laughs> of right now. But if you ever wanted to know what the best deck was between mutants and penguins, well, apparently even having a a water statue lock set up here. Uh, Penguin's gonna take it, I guess. Penguins take it down. Next replay is Satellanites. Back in the day, this deck was a bit of a rank four spam deck. Let's see what we can do here. We got Colonel on the sea string. Specials two warriors from the hand. Overlays into Deltaros, detaching to pop a card on the field itself, which then floats into an Altair to bring back the Deltaros. <laughs> to go into his oldie. Uh, the Neb searches for a, another Telonite. We're gonna send one here to summon Knuckle Sword. Yes, I bet you've never heard of this guy before. Neither have I. Heroic Champion brings back an XE monster into Apoloza. Vega special summons into Kalhai into Gagaga -Ga -Ga Magician. Brings back the Deltaros into uh, some Link Climbing with the Virus Berserk Swordsman, triggering the Al Sam to deal some damage here. Now, a solitaire crazy combo like this, usually consisting of a Zoldade, tends to go with the Armageddon Knight Halka Fibrax, but I guess it's nice to not see that happening. Uh, we're gonna go for a rank 4 Raid Raptor here, and somehow we've managed to uh, smoke screen uh, this deck into a bit of a Raid Raptor combo. Uh, Shoutouts to the WOW Warrior in the hand here. Yep, just laying it down, you know, best level 4 warrior in the game. Gallant Granite adds a uh, Zephrath, yes, a rock monster, a rock mod pendulum scale. Added from deck to the hand, which then actually allows us to go into a pen summon, which the uh, Isolde searched the scale for. There's Shave Force into Cy uh, uh, Cyber Dragon Infinity. And uh, there it is. The most standard, typical, basic Table 500 combo. Some generic extra deck negates that have no business being in a deck that doesn't actually use or utilize any of these cards on a regular basis. Just a, a modern Yu-Gi-Oh in a nutshell. I'm not going to put you through the pain of having to watch Marine Cess play through Six Negates. Spoiler, they don't. Super Sigma! What does that mean? Balance our Lord into Link Disciple, summoning Parallel Exceed, linking away into Link Devotee, tributing, drawing, special summoning a token, two tokens actually, into Wicked! Triggering the Wicked, adding a tuner, Link Rebo for four mud skipper, sign up, mining, gets a uh, diameter, Code Talker inverted, special summons Nabla from the hand here, links into Splash Mage, Nabla tributes for multiplication, multiplication increasing the level into Final Sugma! 
in the EMZ into another final Sugma into another final Sugma <laughs> overlaying into Magnus the great computer getting kaiju and Numeron OTK'd <laughs> beautiful if you ever wanted to know if this unaffected tower monster could be brought down to any sort of terrible level it would probably be overlaying three of them into a uh, computer Good game, uh, Kakion. Good game. Tethys! You guys ever read Tethys, Goddess of Light? This card says when you draw a fairy, except during the damage step, you can reveal one of those monsters and draw one card. Okay, let's see what we're doing here. So we actually drew a card there off of the Dark Lord. We're gonna go Hand Destruction into Magical Mallet. Did we draw a fairy? We did, so we draw one more card. We did, so we draw one more card. <laughs> Gotta reload, though. Did we draw a fairy? We did. Gotta reload. Did we draw a fairy? We did. Draw one. Fairy, draw one. Magical Mallet. Recycle. All right. I think you can kind of see where this is going. We're going to use a bunch of draw cards. And every time we draw a fairy, like now. Like now. Like now. Oh, close. Uh, you, get to you get to trigger the effect of Tethys and reveal the fairy that you drew off the top here. And continue to draw. Now, you might be wondering at this point, okay, to what end? <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, we just put back our whole deck, uh, hand into the deck there. It would have been really funny if you didn't draw a fairy off of that 12-card mulligan. Eight cards left in deck, seven cards left in deck, six cards left in deck, five cards left. To what end? Win condition mod check? Win condition mod check. Where is the win con? All right, it's coming. Don't worry. All right, I think we've got enough here. Into a Solfa Chord Pen Scale and Special Summoning Winged Karibo level nine. That's a level nine here. Every time our opponent is going to take 600 damage when uh, another fairy is summoned. Inflict 600 with Athena. And now we're just going to spam the field with as many fairy special summons as possible. One of the single worst FTKs I've ever seen in this game. Oh, Dagda's a fairy. Oh, that's why we need to ban Dagda. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, it enables Athena FTK. One of the worst FTKs I've ever seen in Yu-Gi-Oh. Athena Thetis draw FTK. Absolutely terrible. Awful. Tri Brigade. Yeah, no, this is Tri Brigade. Trust me. Guys, trust me. It's Tri Brigade. All right, we're going to go into Warbler Cobalt. That's very cool. Yes. Okay, that's a good combo. Now we're going to go into the blue for the Nerval. But what do we do here? Well, we can't make a second recital. <laughs> so the only other option, of course, naturally, is Ghost Trick Dullahan <laughs> into Ghost Trick Mischief. Searching a copy of Ghost Trick Shot, which special summons a Ghost Trick from our hand or grave and then change the face down Ghost Trick to a face up attack position. Surely this will come in useful. Surely this will absolutely help our Tri Brigade deck. <laughs> this sounds like a good card for our Tri Brigade. I hope the Ghost Trick community is watching and they aren't too mad. Uh, uh, MBT Joseph Rothschild's, you know, um, Ghost Trick take. Uh, but let me know what you guys uh, in the Ghost Trick community, all three of you, think about this Ghost Trick version. I think it's a pretty good uh, pretty good deck here, especially considering how it starts with Liralus cards. Using the rank up here to go into Arc Rebellion Exceed Dragon, into Prime Athmech Alberton, which adds any spell in the game in your deck to your hand. Adding a copy of Mystic Walk. Ghost Trick Shot. Specials back Dullahan. We rank up the Dullahan into a rank 2 monster called Manipulator of Souls. You want to know what this card does? Attach material and target number in your grave. Equip that with a number, blah, blah, blah. Once per turn, when you gain life, you can make this card gain an equal amount of that attack and inflict that much to your opponent. So we now have an 8600 Arc Rebellion Exceed Dragon on the field. We're going to tribute it away for Mystic Walk to gain 8600 life, which triggers the Manipulator of Souls to deal 8600 damage. I still think the Tethys FTK is worse than this. I, I'm pretty sure this is better than the Tethys FTK. Okay, all right, yep, yeah, nice uh, Tri Brigade deck. Trick Stars! Some people thought with the light stage coming to two that this today was finally the time for Trick Stars to be a good meta deck. That, that will be shown and proven today because we are going to go turn one light stage into Candina for reincarnation, into small world revealing, searching Ash, Bell, any other hand trap. We're searching Honest to protect Candina. Our opponent is going to draw for turn and use Desires after seeing the most telegraphed droll reincarnation combo in the history of, of, of ever. And so they just fell into the draw reincarnation with Yata Garasu. 
This, ladies and gentlemen, is the most powerful Yata deck. Now, you were wondering, like, Yata coming back, but that card's broken. That card is absurd. That card is so powerful. This is the most powerful Yata deck. This is the strongest Yata deck. A Trickstar engine where you have to hard draw the Yata. It, unplayably bad. Unplayably bad. Terrible. Do not build this. What? What? This is against the best Pendulum player, Almer, here. Those of you watching might may or may not be a little bit upset to watch this person uh, play Pendulum, but trust me, uh, this is as good as Pendulum gets, okay? Because they are incapable of taking down a Watt Cobra. Pass. He had to Veil of the Watt Cobra because it was too strong. Because when this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, and it can attack directly, it adds a Watt Monster. Oh yes, it adds a Watt Monster. And then we protect it by using Honest. Now you might be wondering, why didn't he add a Watt Monster there? Well, because it, it has to do a uh, direct attack. It doesn't even trigger if you protect it. It's so bad. But you see, the good thing here is we've got the Watt Lock. Your opponent cannot select another face-up Watt Monster as an attack target or target with card effects. So if you have multiples... Well, ladies and gentlemen, you've just experienced the modern dupe lock. Oh, yes. Watt Giraffe attacking directly as well as the uh, Gnat or something and the Cobra. Getting some searches here into Watt Train. Oh, baby! Did we just go plus five? But well, you see, Watt Train adds Watt cards with different names from your deck, except Watt Train up to the number of Thunders you control with different names. We're just going to go casually plus five here with the uh, three different, uh, four different Watt Monsters on the field here. United, we stand activated on a Watt Giraffe and punching over for a game. It only took 10 turns for Watts to take out a 2016 pen deck, but he got there in the end. <laughs> he got there in the end. This is the weakest Earth Machine player. This is the worst Earth Machine. The Earth Machine players are so good at the game that this is the worst one among them. And you will just see what he's capable of. Our opponent here, Kafu, or rather player here, is playing uh, Mech Knights. A uh, very, uh, you know, how we say, underrepresented deck played by maybe like one person in the entire community, at least to any sort of varying successful degree. Uh, we are going to do a bunch of Mech Knight plays here going into... Yep, you saw that. That is World Legacy Scars. World Legacy Scars has appeared many times in Table 500. It banishes eight Mech Knights with different names from your grave or face-up field, and then it sends the entire hand and extra deck of your opponent to the graveyard. Remember that this is the weakest Earth Machine player. Can he win with no extra deck and no hand? Dop decks Machina Overdrive. Brings back... Uh, Ibli here, we're going to use Machina Overdrive, which tributes a machine that he gave him with the Mech Knight Gear Suit to special summon Citadel from the deck. <laughs> Citadel gets to Raigeki the board here and destroy all monsters. And uh, our Mech Knight hero here is going to keep trying his best to clear this Earth Machine board, but he can't. And now Overdrive has a grave effect that allows it to recycle cards in the extra deck. And now we have extra deck options. Our opponent is then going to set Ice Dragon Prison, trying to banish the Psychic Monster here, but dodging with the uh, Mech Knight Purple Nightfall. And uh, still trying to play through this board here. Mech Knight's apparently struggling to finish off an opponent that they loop the entire hand and extra of. But then again, what can you say? It is like the weakest Earth Machine player. There is there, the, the, and We haven't even seen the beginning and the power level of better Earth Machine players. This is the worst one, remember. So imagine what it's like to duel against the strongest Earth Machine player. Bringing back Ruin Force. Yeah, you're seeing that correctly. Ruin Force is here. Uh, meetings, a bunch of World Legacy uh, monsters here overlaying into the Dengirsu to try and clear the board. Bringing back the Citadel, however, still floating. Citadel, once again, trying to destroy the field. Dengirsu protects. Ruin Force attacks over. Duster hits the back row. Into Morningstar. Can we finally please just out this board? You've hand-looped him and ripped his whole extra deck. How are you still alive? Solemn Strike on the Blue Sky top deck. World Legacy Memory summoning another Purple Nightfall. Banishing and adding. Check this out and passing. Passing back with the Ruin Force here. Incapable of doing anything. Avermax attacks into the uh, Ruin Force. Activates the effect of Ruin Force. Crashing it just to shuffle away the Ruin Force. Deployment finally has the discard. Into Gear Frame from a China in Class Spare. Which gets to dump a card into the Gear Gigant. Searching a card here. Remember we did recycle some card in extra deck. And finally beating a Mech Knight Scars for the entire extra in hand. Earth Machine, literally best deck, hugest top deck, unbelievable, and somehow, someway, pulling itself back from that. Yang Zings! What is Yang Zing capable of in 2022? 
The most strongest power play this deck I remember was Jaltu, as you see here. Discard two worms and special two worms from your deck with different attributes. Can this deck do anything else? Can it do anything else? All right, well, let's have a look here. Our opponent is uh, getting a couple of free cards here, uh, but we're going to do some link climbing and special summoning of some dudes, and we're going to go into the Predator Plant, which tributes to special summon out the Garden Rose Flora. We have a Ray in the hand for some... I don't know why this is here. Don't ask. Don't think about it. Just, just don't... Just too many questions. Shh, shh, quiet. Celine brings back a monster. We're going to go link into Akashic Magician Recycling. Recover specials itself out. And we are going to go into a Relinquished Anima. Dumping Dot Scraper. Making a bunch of climbs here into the Saryuja. Special summoning the Evil Thorn. Tributing itself. Special summoning out of the deck here. Two more Thorns. And the Link Rebo brings itself back here. I don't really know what it was for. But we're going to go into the Virus Berserk Swordsman. Special summoning. Link Climbing. Doing a little bit more into Azolde. Is it for Armageddon Knight? Please summon Armageddon Knight. I beg you. Sending. How many was that? Mushroom Man! <laughs> Awakening of the, pe the possessed nefariousness has been special summoned from the deck by tributing the Mushroom Man. Into the Yazi here. One for one. Special summoning out Pulao of the Yang Zing. Monster Reborn on the Chai Wen. Into Level Eater. Alright. Sinking away the entire field for Chao Feng. What does Chao Feng do? Well, remember, Chao Feng says that your opponent cannot activate monster effects or or monsters with the same original attribute as Yang Zing's used for the synchro summon of this card. So the opponent is incapable of summoning earth, water, fire, wind, light, and dark monsters. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's every monster in the game, except for the gods. It is also unaffected by spells, it is unaffected by traps, and it cannot be destroyed by battle. There is a no out in the game to Chao Feng, unless he summons two more monsters and he gets sphere moded, because he can't summon Kaijus. So, you know, <laughs> good luck playing the game, I guess. Unaffected by to spells, trash can't be destroyed by battle. Leave a comment down below if you know how you can out this singular Chao Feng. I'd love to know. Are we going to play it out here? Our opponent is going to play out and then realizes very slowly that they actually can't, uh, you know, do anything about this. There it is, dude. There it is. Chao Feng. One last replay before it's time. Yata Garasu! I think there's one way to search this, kind of. We got Fluffle. Right, for patchwork, adding a bunch of cards here. Fusion Shokan into Tiger. Getting some draws here. There's the Yata Garasu. Fusion Meister, uh, Fright for Meister here. Stacking with the Saber into the Dagda. Going into a... Who knows what the hell that was. I don't know, dude. But it searches when it's sent to the graveyard, I believe. Uh, Doomdog Orkthors as a level 8 Fiend, which special summons Sky Scourge Norleras. You guys know what Sky Scourge Norleras is? Well, it special summons itself from the hand by banishing three Dark Fiends and a Light Fairy. You can pay 1,000 life points, send all cards on the field, and then both players' hands to the graveyard, and then you draw one card. Sends the entire field and the opponent's hand to the graveyard to draw Yatagarasu. Now, the problem with this specific combo is that it requires your opponent not to top deck a good card. I don't know, that's the problem, right? This, this is the problem with this combo. It requires that your opponent draw nothing. Like, if they top deck one good card, even if it's a hand trap that they just set, Yata Lock doesn't work. Awful! Awful! This is probably the second best Yadagarasu deck that exists. Uh, close to the Trickstar Droll Reincarnation one we saw earlier. Uh, but yes, uh, we're just going to very slowly draw some Fluffle Monsters and end the game out like this. Yadagarasu was a mistake or was it not a mistake? If this is the best deck for Yadagarasu, I think we can safely assume that Yadagarasu coming back was probably fine. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time. Every Table 500 for the last year and a half? He's been making comebacks. It's Yajiro Invader. He's coming. He's coming. So, these combos always start off with the Super Heavy Samurai, which uh, allows us to basically facilitate a game state where we can uh, put a monster, or rather give control of a monster, uh, to our opponent via the searched Yajiro Invader with the King of the Pharaoh Imps. But what does this actually do? Let's remind ourselves. If this card is normal special to a zone that is not in the center main monster zone, destroy this. Once per turn, you can move this card to an unused adjacent monster zone. Now, here's the important part. Each time 
exactly one monster is normal or special to your opponent's field. Remember, we're the opponent now because we gave it control of it. Move this card to the adjacent main monster zone closer to that opponent's monster, destroying all cards in that column. So if we special summon a monster here, Yajiro Invader will move one column closer, destroying everything in its path. All right. Here we go, special summoning Swap Frog into the same zone. Nothing happens here. We're going to activate uh, the gluttonous uh, Reptolphin Grethus, who specials back the Shark Cruiser. And now Yajiro Invader moves to that zone, destroying all cards in the column, which means that this Shark Cruiser, this face-up card you control is destroyed by your opponent's card, special up to two level four lower water monsters from your deck. So now the Shark Cruiser special summons Crystal Girl and Swap Frog. Now, you see, the entire idea here is that we're constantly putting Yajiro Invader into the zone that we care about. So we're summoning Curious here, and Curious has the grave effect of not just milling, but also when it's sent to the graveyard, you can add a card from your deck to uh, your grave to your hand. Sending the Waking the Dragon, triggering the Yajiro, and giving us the Waking the Dragon. Sets the Waking the Dragon into dark. Waking the Dragon triggers a special summoning Dragoonity Knight Trident. Moving the dark here. Dark searches a dark monster. Proof and the Tactical Trapper. Moving closer towards the Ronin Toden. Dragonini Knight is uh, activating his effect here, which says, choose a number from 1 to 3 and send that many cards you control to the graveyard. Look at your opponent's extra deck and send an equal number of cards from there to the graveyard. So we're looping three cards out of our opponent's extra deck. Already it's GG because you've removed the dry ass. Let's see how much further we can go here. Summoning out Ronin Toden, Monka W, he's coming into Abyss Lacia when it's destroyed, floats into the Shark Cruiser, then triggers the Yajiro Invader, moves towards the Shark Cruiser, special summoning out these two from the deck here. Ice Jade Tanola activates, brings back the Shark Cruiser, triggering once again Yajiro Invader. Here we got the Atlantean Prince, Dugarez is summoned, and Dugarez special, uh, activates the effect to special summon the Tactical Trapper here. Tactical Trapper is important because if this card in its owner's possession is destroyed, you can set one of your banished normal trap cards, which is a boo-boo game. <laughs> See what that does in a second. Dragoon is sent off of the press. <laughs> boo-boo game. <laughs> Lapis Dragon special from the hand here into the White Aura Dolphin. Activating the Dagonis into the Beatrice. Beatrice activates the effect here to send a copy of Exchange of the Spirit. Vespinato is overlaid, and that triggers to bring back Shark Cruiser, which then triggers the Yajiro, destroying Boo Boo Game and Shark Cruiser. Boo Boo Game sets, waking the dragon, and exchange of the spirit. And also floats into the Swamp Frog and the Mermel of this Pike. Alright, okay, are we getting there? What's the end game here? We're summoning Lina now, triggering the Waking the Dragon and the Lina, searching a light monster, searching Zaborg and floating into another Trident. Swap Frog, special summons into the same, uh, sorry, Ronin Totem. We're gonna use the Trident here, looping three more cards out of the opponent's extra deck here. Two more cards, two cards out the extra deck here. Bring back the Shark Cruiser, White Aura. Floats back into the uh, another white aura, triggering that shark cruiser we brought back here. Poor shark cruiser, he's being slapped around like a bitch. Dude. Shark cruiser is being slapped like a bitch today. He really is. Uh, Monoceros keeps bringing itself back every time it's destroyed by card effect by banishing, I believe, a fish in the graveyard. Here is Hope Woven Spider Shark getting destroyed and bringing back Curious onto the field, which we then trigger to add back the Waking the Dragon from the destroyed Curious. And uh, here we're making Ascension Sky Dragon, an old school uh, prize card. Don't really remember what this does, but here we go. Ronin Toden, Waking the Dragon, floats into Angel 01, tributing for Zaborg. And here we go. Zaborg has the effect to rip eight cards out of the opponent's extra deck. And now we're floating into Geomancer of the Ice Barrier. Then we're going into Awakening of the Possessed, which we're special summoning out of the deck here. And we get to flip. I can't remember how you're triggering. How are you using a trap card in this turn? You must have triggered something here that allows you to use traps. It must have been in Makura at some point, right? Or was it Boo Boo Game? It was Boo Boo Game that allows you to use traps this turn, I think, right? Or one trap card. So Exchange of the Spirit says, if both players have 15 or more cards in their graveyards, pay a thousand life. Each player swaps the cards in their graveyards with the cards in their deck, then shuffles their deck. <laughs> Exchanging the ex Swapping the main deck with the graveyard. And then your opponent has to draw a card, I think, from the familiar possessed or the, the poison draw. 
and because they are no longer able to draw cards legally, they deck out and they instantly lose. <laughs> Freaking boo boo game, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. All right. Fantastic. Well, I don't know how you keep finding ways to innovate upon Yajiro and Vader, but you've made it a real art form. Another iteration of Yajiro. This time, Exchange Deckout FTK. Very cool. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of our Table 500. It is time for you to vote for your favorite. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of Table 500, June 2022, is, of course, Monka W. He's coming. Wins every time, understandable. Make better replays, I guess, chat. But, in second place, we have Chao Feng. A uh, six mods, six attribute special summon vanities fiend unaffected by spells, traps, and can be destroyed by battle. All right, that was a good one. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching and taking part in this. Remember that these are on a release schedule basis of usually per ban list or per set. Please read the rules next time, how you can send your replays in. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, adios.